Welcome back to another History Skills video. Today we're looking at archaeological dating techniques. When archaeologists find ancient artifacts, they want to know how old they are so they can understand the past better. However, very few items from history have exact dates on them, which makes it very difficult to know for certain when things were originally made. Therefore, archaeologists and scientists have to rely upon clever ways of finding out how old things are. These ways are referred to as techniques, which allow people to measure different things in or around an individual artefact that can provide clues about its age. There are two groups of dating techniques that archaeologists can use to date an object. One group of techniques is called relative dating techniques. The other group is known as absolute dating techniques. Let's look at each category in turn and examine specific examples of each kind. Before the development of modern science, archaeologists had to find general ways of dating objects. The easiest way to do this was to compare individual artefacts with each other. If archaeologists knew which ones were older or younger than others, they could easily organise the artefacts into chronological order. In this system, knowing the exact year of creation was not possible, but at least it helped to know which items were older in relation to other objects. Since this technique relied upon knowing the relationship between artefacts, it is known as relative dating. Here are some specific ways archaeologists know which objects are older or younger than other objects. So firstly, there is a technique known as stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is a study of soil layers in which individual artefacts are found. Geologists have noticed for centuries that layers of soil have different colours, which indicates different periods of time when the soil was created. A layer of soil is called a stratum, and multiple layers of soil are called strata. Therefore, this system of relative dating is called stratigraphy. This technique works because of a rule that archaeologists made called the rule of superposition. The rule of superposition states that the soil layer closest to the top of the ground is the youngest and the most recent, and as the layers get deeper, the older they are. Therefore, artefacts that are found below other artefacts are considered to be older. Another method of determining the relative date of artefacts is to compare the same type of objects over time. For example, if I wanted to know which model of iPhone was older or younger, we need to compare different models of iPhone over time. Archaeologists have noticed that types of objects change gradually over time. As a result, we can arrange objects in order from the youngest to the oldest based upon changes to the shape, decorations or style. Since this technique focuses mainly on the type of the objects, it's called typology. Typology is most often used for pottery, also known as ceramics, since pots and vases survive a very long time in the ground and can be a reliable way of dating objects. Ceramic typology is used all over the world since most human cultures have used specific styles and decorations in their pottery. The second kind of dating technique is called absolute dating. This is the more recent version of dating objects, since it relies on modern scientific techniques. Absolute dating seeks to find a more precise or an absolute age for an object. To do this, scientists try to measure a chemical or physical substance within the object itself. The exact chemical or physical element can change depending upon the type of object. The most famous and the most widely used absolute dating technique is called radiocarbon dating. This system tries to measure a specific natural element called carbon-14. Carbon-14 is found in all living objects on Earth and is an element that is absorbed throughout the life of an organism. However, once they die, carbon-14 slowly starts to disappear. Thankfully, the speed at which it disappears is very steady. In fact, it is so steady and reliable, exactly half of the carbon-14 is still in the creature's remains after 5,730 years. This is called the half-life of carbon-14. Due to its reliable nature, scientists can take a sample from an artefact and measure how much carbon remains, and then count backwards to determine how long ago the organism died. Since this system only works on objects that were once alive, it can be used to date bone, shell, wood and other organic matter. Another absolute dating technique is known as dendrochronology. This method seeks to find a precise date of an object based upon the age of trees. The ancient Greek word for trees is dendros, so this system is called dendrochronology. Scientists have noticed that when you cut down a tree, you can see rings inside the trunk of the tree. Each of the rings is actually one year of growth during the tree's life. However, careful inspection shows you that you can see that each of the rings is slightly different, 
Some are thick, some are thin, and some have slightly different colours. Growth rings can be unique based upon the environmental conditions during the year of growth. Changes in rainfall, sunlight, temperature and soil nutrients create a special kind of ring. However, all trees in the same location will have exactly the same growth. And since each location produces a unique ring type, the sequence of years in that location will produce a unique pattern of growth ring in all of the trees in the area. Therefore, whenever a tree is cut down to make buildings, weapons or other wooden objects, the wood stores the unique pattern within it. Scientists can therefore compare different sections of wood and create a chronological sequence of the years in a specific location. Since each ring is one year in time, dating wooden objects using dendrochronology can often provide a specific year of when the wooden structure was made. The final absolute dating technique measures radiation from minerals found in pottery. When clay is heated during the creation of ceramic objects like pots or vases, the process of heating changes the minerals in the clay. In nature, some minerals like quartz or feldspar gradually collect radiation from the atmosphere, and this increases over time. However, when these elements are in clay that is superheated in a kiln to make pottery, these minerals release this radiation in the form of heat and light. By the end of the heating process, these minerals are emptied of their radiation and have to start collecting it again. The collection of radiation is quite steady, and scientists can work out how long it has been since the pottery was made by measuring how much radiation has been collected. To do this, they take part of the ceramic object and superheat it again, and measure the amount of heat and light that is released. Since it measures heat, thermo, and light, luminous, it is called thermoluminescence dating. Once the radiation is measured, archaeologists can then count backwards in time to estimate when the pottery was originally fired in a kiln. So there we go, there are the different kinds of archaeological dating. I hope this video has proved useful to you. If you need more examples, explanations and advice, jump over to the History Skills website and I'll see you next time.